Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. My name is uh, Fausto Brevi, and I'm from the Design School of Polytechnic Milano. And uh, uh, with me uh, today, there is uh, Professor Nicola Crea. Uh, Nicola Crea is uh, uh, another professor of uh, Design School of Polytechnic Milano. We were uh, uh, involved uh, in a project that is uh, out of Ficina Futuro. And uh, uh, from that experience, uh, uh, today we will uh, uh, talk uh, and uh, we will uh, share with you some uh, uh, our ideas about uh, the design and mobility in a 2086 uh, perspective. <clears throat> uh, why 2086 perspective? For two different reasons. Uh, the, the first one is that uh, uh, in 2086, uh, uh, there uh, uh, will be the, the second century from the birth uh, of uh, the car, uh, because the first car convention uh, has been produced in uh, uh, 1886. And because uh, uh, this experience come out from uh, uh, an exhibition that uh, has been managed in the uh, Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao uh, last summer. Um, that was an experience uh, uh, born from uh, a phone call by Lord Norman Foster to the uh, Dean of the Design School. At that time, uh, the Dean was uh, uh, Professoressa Luisa Collina. <clears throat> and uh, Lord Foster, uh, with his foundation, uh, had been commissioned uh, by the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao to create an exhibition entitled Motion Autos Art Architecture, in which uh, there was uh, the uh, relationship between uh, these uh, three uh, fields of uh, art, in some way, uh, autos, uh, art uh, that basically means uh, uh, painter and architecture. Uh, the exhibition uh, uh, was uh, on uh, on stage from uh, uh, early August uh, to mid of September uh, last summer, and uh, uh, it has been organized with uh, a, a first uh, uh, part uh, with uh, the exhibition of. Uh, uh, existing and old uh, example of art, autos, uh, and uh, uh, architecture. And a final gallery <clears throat> that, uh, uh, in the idea of uh, Lord Norman Foster, uh, has been devoted to visions of mobility at the end of uh, the current century, which coincidentally marks in 2086 the second hundred anniversary of the birth of the automobile. So at this final gallery uh, focused on the future, have been invited uh, 15 international schools. Uh, this is the full list. Uh, there uh, were uh, seven uh, universities from Europe, uh, four from North America, three from Asia, and one from Africa. So uh, it was really a scenario from all over the world. And uh, uh, the only one from Italy uh, invited has been uh, the Polytechnic in Milano and uh, the Design School uh, in particular. <clears throat> so uh, we will start this talk uh, from the contribution of the School of Design in this vision, but our talk then will be uh, focused in uh, uh, discussing and talking and sharing our ideas about uh, the future and uh, how our students uh, uh, see the future. Uh, the contribution of the design school uh, came from uh, four different sources. Uh, the, a, the, a master course that means a postgraduate specializing in a master course in transportation and automobile design. Uh, and I'm the director of this uh, postgraduate uh, master course. Uh, then uh, there are uh, three other uh, curricular courses 
of the design school and the first one is the industrial design studio uh, managed by professor nicola crea uh, together with uh, professor roberto boni uh, then there were also two other uh, experience uh, a, a workshop managed by professor francesco zurlo and uh, another workshop managed by professor giulio ceppi that were uh, on stage in another of these uh, talks uh, that are available on YouTube uh, on the uh, de design department channel on YouTube. So uh, that uh, was uh, uh, simply my general introduction uh, for uh, uh, giving you a framework. And uh, now it's uh, time to uh, leave the, the floor to uh, Professor Nicola Crea for uh, starting uh, this uh, uh, talk and uh, uh, I will uh, listen uh, your uh, idea, your comments, Nicola, and then uh, I will uh, uh, dialogue with you uh, during this uh, hour that uh, we have to spend together. Well, thank you, Fausto, very much for your introduction. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll have a, a very interesting discussion because uh, considering all the work that has been done uh, from the future, so from the end of it, it's much easier to try some conclusions and some findings that came out during the path of, of development of the projects. Uh, as you uh, uh, mentioned before, uh, at that time, I was running this lab that was focused on on, on mobility, and uh, it's in the course of uh, um, industrial design for a product for a product. So we were supposed to be designing a product to be uh, imagined and designed for the year 2086. Now, the first thing to do is was to to describe what were the possible scenarios that we could foresee or imagine for that year. Uh, as soon as we started to make uh, our research, we ended up with some uh, discoveries that, um, that actually are happening before the 2086. Now, uh, I would like to mention uh, in, in, in 2045 or 2050 maybe, uh, there is a deadline that has been identified by Ray Kurzweil, which is a, sp a specialized uh, uh, about, uh, a, a, a researcher on, on, in, on uh, artificial intelligence. And he set that date to be called the point of singularity. Now, I, for, for whoever is not uh, familiar with the term, uh, singularity is considered the date when uh, the computer power of artificial intelligence will overcome the computer power of men, the computer, the, the thinking ability of, of men. So uh, there will be a very peculiar time in, in, in human history because we don't know yet if this superior, in commas, intelligence will do our own interest or his own interest. This is quite interesting to, to think about. Uh, actually, I've heard that uh, an agency in Cambridge has been founded just to uh, control this uh, eventuality of the, the artificial intelligence to overcome uh, human intelligence and so do his own interest. Now, this is, is it's, it's a secondary information, but uh, this was a, a deadline, a point where, uh, and we, are, we, are, we were supposed to work after that. So that means in a place or in a point in time, where actually uh, we are not the maximum intelligence on earth. So we cannot actually decide if we will be deciding what's gonna happen or not. This is quite interesting. And well, before that, before 2040, 2050, there's another deadline, which is 2030. Now, 2030 is uh, being designed as a deadline for transhumanism, which is another, interesting fact that is going to happen to our civilization. That means we go over being human and becoming something else, which is another question mark 
I'm just where we don't know anything about what's going to happen after that. So uh, these quite interesting turning points that are going to happen before 8086 Make, made our problem of designing a product something very secondary or negligible uh, besides what's going to happen to human society. Uh, so actually the challenge of designing a product became for us something more, much more expanded. So we had to make a search and become some kind of society designer. So we had to imagine what society will become after 2030, after 2040 or 2050, and then finally, 66 years from now, or from the, when we started our project, uh, just to, to, to design a product. Probably the name product would not make sense anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, just saying something uh, which I, I, I cannot have any judgment on it. So uh, we actually realized that what we had to find out was a new scenario for that age. So we, we made a, uh, actually I have to mention uh, Professor Boni, which was making a lot of effort to create different scenarios in which we had to identify a product that was that would be coherent with that kind of situation. So in certain cases, there would be, of course, no roads, people would living underground, or, you know, situations that were really, really uh, inimaginable today. So actually, we ended up with certain projects that were really, really different from the scenario we're living in today. And well, uh, and I think this opened up to uh, certain um, views that are really, uh, really, really original and different from our own point of view. I have to say, I have to say that if we had, if we were a little bit uh, uh, um, uh, careful about everything has been published or uh, has happened in the last century, uh, we had some signs. We had a lot of signs. Uh, starting from 1972, when the uh, matter report of, of the Club di Roma started talking about sustainability, uh, with the famous paper, it was the Limiti dello Sviluppo, which was actually outlining the fact that our method of development of society would not have an end. We, we cannot get, a, get away with the finish, the finish finishness of the planet. So it was kind of thing that we say in Italian, a risorsa infinita. That means it was expecting that the planet will grow with us, but this doesn't, it's not going to happen. So actually, this was the first sign that we had to consider, but it's, it's been a, not really taken seriously in consideration for about 50 years. No, recently. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Nicola. I, I absolutely agree with you about this uh, specific topic because I remember very well that uh, when I was uh, a university student, uh, this, uh, uh, the discussion about this paper from the Club of Rome uh, was uh, very high and uh, it was very sensitive. Uh, but uh, afterwards, uh, it seems that something was completely disappeared from the public discussion and from and only recently in some way we were uh, starting back speaking about the same topics and the same problems uh, mainly because of the climate changes and so on but uh, it, it happened something long uh, uh, 30 years from 80s to 2000 10, uh, in which uh, it seems that everybody in the world uh, forgot that completely. That thing is incredible. Yes. Well, the people that was against it or, or that, that didn't consider it seriously was faithful that technology will overcome any, any difficulties, that probably with technology will overcome any po possible problem. But practically, it is not going to happen. <laughs> it's not happening. So actually, it came up. Uh, very recently, uh, again, as, a, as a, one of the major problems. Now, there were some other signs uh, over time uh, that were given. Uh, there was uh, Jeremy Rif Rifkin, which is a, a, an economist, but is a, a, a futurist mostly because he's a, a social theorist and uh, he studies uh, all the possible developments of society. He wrote a couple of things that were really, really interesting. One was about the end of work, 
was this was the title of his book that was he presented in 1995 which seemed very very strange to hear at that time you know end of work what does it mean end of work but now we know now we know we are losing uh, work every day by day you know and probably in a very short time there will be no much work available but only participation in society which now it's been you know uh, uh, re-elaborated in another way now the a second book that he wrote that i consider very interesting especially at that time it's called the, uh, the uh, age of access. Age of access in Italian is l'era dell'accesso, means uh, there will be no more property because people will use things and will pay only for the use uh, of the things, which actually today is happening very widely. You know, car sharing is very popular. Uh, vacation houses, you can use it for a short while. Many things you can be used, even even bicycles. You can use the bicycle for for a few hours and put it back where it was. So, at the Products time, as services and not yes, for exactly. being a, a real good. Yes, but this comes out very, very, uh, very strong today, where the end of property is being theorized widely and is 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 being uh, generally proposed even from the from the church. You know, there is this uh, 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 inclusive capitalism, which is this movement which is explaining that property is not necessary, you can just use the things. And so, uh, it, putting things together, now you realize that this is the process we're going through. Actually, we are ending up with this, uh, with this kind of uh, objective. Now, uh, the third book that uh, Rifkin wrote that was quite interesting was uh, Third Industrial Revolution. It, is, is a very popular book actually he he wrote it in 2011 and i thought it was opening to a new golden era because he was mentioning that as much as the information is going to be has been shared after internet introduction uh he said that now we can share energy so each house can become a provider of energy and we can put it in 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 the, in the web uh, in, in a kind of web so that we can share energy and with energy would not be a problem anymore. So I thought that was a very brilliant book. And, and, and actually, uh, I hope that we will start moving in that direction. But unfortunately, I didn't hear from him. I mean, in the sense, he didn't publish something uh, in support of this theory for, for about uh, an, a, d a decade. Uh, since I realized just recently he just wrote uh, just a few, uh, few months ago uh, another book, which is The Age of Resilience, um, reimaging the existence of a rewilding Earth. So he, he is now saying that uh, now we have to readapt to nature. So we have to go back, one step back, to go into the, what used to have to be the man's role on the planet that has been a little bit, uh, um, how do you say, uh, it's been uh, stravolto. I can't, I can't say the word in English. Stravolto means uh, uh, change, yeah, deep, deeply completely change. Completely change. Uh, completely the... change deeply. And well, this uh, uh, aspect that Genevieve Rifkin is, is putting uh, in focus today, uh, it's, it's quite similar to the one that has uh, Serge Latouche, which is another economist. Uh, he's a French uh, professor. Um, he is the, the, the promoter of uh, degrowth theory. And, and, and again, he started quite a while ago. He started in 2004 with uh, uh, some, some publications on how to survive uh, to the development in line with what the Club of Roma was saying. Uh, uh, Le Paris de la décroissance, uh, so the, the, the bet on the, on the, on the, on the décroissance, on, on, the, on the degrowth. Then uh, another book was Farewell to Growth, that is uh, in Italian is translated Breve Trattato sulla decrescita serena. In, in any case, he's been writing many things about theorizing this downscale of human society. So it's some kind of a, a step back from where we arrived uh, about 10 years ago. I think the peak of economy was around the year 2000. So now, uh, 
again, he, he just came out with a, with a publication, which, uh, which is called uh, L'abbondanza frugale come arte di vivere, which is the frugal abundance as uh, uh, the art of living, if I can translate. I don't know if it's ever been translated because this book came out again a couple of months ago. Now, uh, even, even uh, Latouche, so he's theorizing of some kind of a downscaling of economy, politics, role, uh, again, again. Now, I am saying all this because I want to see how much this will affect the fact that we are designing products for mobility. Because mobility, again, uh, we will see, uh, will have some uh, profound impact on the way we think of, of, uh, of, of moving. Because probably we don't have to move physically, but we will have to move only our thoughts which is what we, that's the real reason why we're moving today, but we don't even know it. So we, we think that we are moving because we have to go to another place, but normally we go in another place to do something that if we can do it in a remote, we don't need to go. So actually it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, well, it's, it's a discussion. It's, it's an interesting, interesting discuss. topic to discuss about because uh, yeah, I agree with you from a professional point of view. I mean, uh, when you travel for business, uh, not so sure when you travel for pleasure, uh, because uh, you have seen also uh, last summer, uh, after a couple of years of uh, problems for traveling because of the COVID pandemic, uh, that last summer was vice versa, was a real mess because everybody was uh, in a rush for going back traveling for pleasure uh, after a couple of years. So uh, probably it will be a need to reduce something. But at the same time, the, the, the pleasure of uh, movement and uh, traveling is something that, especially for uh, uh, young people, is uh, something that is uh, uh, in their DNA in some way, and it will not so easy to change these. Uh, uh, also, if of course, uh, if we will be in the need, uh, everything could be arranged in some way because uh, uh, the, the, the human uh, is a special kind of animals that with uh, a great uh, uh, capacity to adapt uh, to the, 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 to the situations. Yeah. Uh, and in some way we can see also, let me say from a, a political point of view, when there is some big changes in political situation uh, because of a revolution or because of a war and so on, uh, we are uh, incredibly uh, strong in adapting. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if uh, and I hope, of course, that uh, we will not oblige from uh, a, a tra from something tragedy from outside. Uh, it's not so easy to to push people in this direction uh, in a, a soft way. Let me say. <laughs> yes, uh, let, let me just give you a feedback uh, because I totally agree with you. Actually, I am a, a a, a, a fan of nature and hiking and skiing and swimming and being in nature etc but i am afraid i'm afraid that if we don't change radically the way we think of the world the world wants to provide us some fun fun to be done inside of a room with virtual reality where you could do things we in safety where we can probably fly, you can swim, you can jump, you can do all sorts of crazy things without moving from your room. And this is something I don't like. Absolutely, I don't like. Me but too. unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I've been, I heard of people saying, why do racing with real cars and, and real people that is so dangerous? Why don't we do it virtually like they do on, on video games? You know, they are thinking of doing real race competition in every pilot is in his own room and he actually is driving and he's probably having a lot of fun but he's not going to be in danger of his life because he's doing everything virtually but 
again the, 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 let me say the problem is when when these kind of people uh, go outside the virtual reality because they think to be still in the virtual reality <laughs> and they yeah. didn't realize that there isn't a day uh, okay reboot restart and nothing happened in real life yes, i'm afraid i'm afraid that whoever be belongs to the physical world like we are will be considered backwards and only people that is really uh, jet fighting uh, racing cars and doing crazy things virtually they are really updated and that's the real life so i mean you never know what's going to happen in 60 years <laughs> you know <laughs> Of but course, again, also look, looking back 60 years, uh, it's interesting for understanding uh, how much uh, we have changed in some way, our uh, way of living and uh, our uh, uh, passions and so on. Uh, yes, there is, a, there is a rule which was uh, uh, defined by Kurzweil, the, the guy who wrote the book uh, uh, Singularity is Near, he, he wrote it in 2005, and, and it's called, uh, I can't remember the name, but in any way, he says the return from technology is becoming quicker and quicker. So yes. uh, looking back 50 years, I don't think is, uh, is comparable to the next 50 years Absolutely. because of this uh, law of, of returns, uh, which is he's defining being uh, increasingly fast. So, yeah, I mean, just... that, that's for sure. That's the... That uh, is something that I completely agree with you because uh, it's, uh, it's a sort of uh, uh, it's not a linear uh, grow, uh, but it's uh, an exponential. Yeah, absolutely. Process. Yeah. Now, may, since I was mentioning Kurzweil, uh, it surprised me that again, he is the third one that this year, a couple of months ago, again, he wrote again another book about singularity, which is called Singularity is Nearer. So which is ancora più vicina, <laughs> and in which he is considering everything he said uh, uh, 15 years ago, saying that 40% of his predictions were actually uh, put in place. They, they, they realized that they actually happened. So uh, uh, what is interesting for me to see how come in in few months, uh, just few months ago, even after we did the experiment with the Guggenheim and the, and the school, we had these three books that came out, The Singularity is Nearer, uh, the book from uh, um, Latouche about uh, uh, frugal abundance, and the, and the book from uh, Rifkin, uh, The Age of Resilience, which is, uh, they are all picturing uh, some kind of evolution of civilization in the same direction that we seem have started. So it's quite interesting to, to, to understand that we are going in a pretty definite situation. Uh, we only have to now define if we will take the good side or the bad side. Now, if I can divide, define this uh, in, in, a very, in a very rough way, I would say that uh, the, the, there is an in, in, in evil way of thinking of the future when we say that uh, people will be in slavery, uh, there will be prevarication, uh, competition, violence, uh, control, uh, etc., etc., which is one side. And, well, we have seen some of these things, uh, some signs, which I think uh, they are not desirable, and I hope this is, was only an accident. But then there is the good side. The good side is about... Uh, uh, what Rifkin actually uh, wrote another book, which was the empathic civilization, uh, uh, the, uh, the race to a global consciousness in a world of in crisis. So he gives for granted that we are in 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 a crisis, and he's uh, hoping that in, in in with the resilience that he is proposing in the, in the other book, we will reach this uh, with this age when people will have another form of relationship, some kind of, uh, uh, let's say, empathy with each other, uh, some kind of uh, consciousness of, 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 of collectivity. I mean, so that we all, we all feel of being part of one, of one element. You know, today uh, is very common to fight for yourself and not for a common cause. Uh, well, 
it, it doesn't pay, doesn't pay because uh, people finish to, to hurt each other and, and there is no, no contribution to development of society. So I hope that we will get to the point where people will start making contribution. <coughs> now, uh, I would like to go back to the products so anyway, because <laughs> this is just a very wide picture. But uh, to me, it's very, it's very, it, it was necessary to, to, to make some assumptions. Now, like I mentioned before, uh, I'm afraid that in 60 years, if technology keeps developing at the rate or the, the speed which is doing today with this uh, uh, curve of, of, uh, of uh, exponential growth, um, well, I believe that material is going to be considered something slow, something inconvenient, something expensive, something that we don't want to deal with. So uh, probably, like I mentioned before, uh, many of the reasons why we move, they can be delegated to other forms of transferring information, or transferring experience, transferring uh, knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in my impression, is that is a is a is, is a concrete possibility? So this means that there is there will be a big big world that will be virtual. Uh, of course, today we 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 talk a lot about uh, uh, virtual reality, but this is only the beginning because I know that many things they start to be done in in virtual reality. I had this experience in uh, in um, in England a few years ago, where we we developed uh, a, a lab which was completely controlled by virtual reality. So the lab was doing car design without actually building any model. So everything was virtual. So people had the, 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 the goggles on and they start walking around a non-existing model and talking about the, the forms of the, of the car without even producing it. And it was much more accurate than the real physical model. <laughs> you can tell me, uh, Faust, you know that. So it was actually surprisingly to, to, make, to have this experience and understanding in a, in a second, car design doesn't exist physically anymore. We don't need it. We don't need to build things. We don't need to get dirty. We don't need to, 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 to spend time and money to build physical things because you can actually, you know, the, we, we had a, a software, we, you could even enter in, into the cylinder camber, chamber. Uh, you can enter any single place of the car and look for any possible angle. So, uh, and this thing was enormous. Uh, you, you, you feel like a little bee uh, flying around this, this virtual object and looking it in the most detailed uh, qualities. Yeah. You are describing uh, a, a, comp a revolution uh, in some way in designing things but that means that anyway we will design and we will produce what we have designed. We will design. Our our brain will still work, but the tools will not need to go through matter. They, we, we will go through some uh, digital information that will give us the tools to do some incredible things, which they are already there. I mean, I'm not talking about we think of in the future. No, we we have done this five years ago. And, and, and I was impressed because I said, this is the end. I mean, we're not going to walk around the car anymore because we don't need it. It's only a matter of making an investment one time, and then it's going to be very, very cheap to reproduce new forms. So this is the first thing that made me think that matter is not going to be so relevant in the future. And, you know, of course, my mind goes to Matrix, uh, to the film Matrix, that of is course. actually anticipated this concept uh, quite a while ago and well it's a film it's not science it's not reality but i can understand the possibility of something such a thing to happen now uh, okay so this was one of the one of the concepts that i thought about this but uh, the second concept which i thought would be important is one of the roles of automobiles like you know very well is that for one fraction of it is mobility but another big part is representation of the self so you you buy a ferrari not because you have to go to work or because you have to go anywhere 
you just buy the Ferrari because it's an image product that you need to show to friends or you to keep it under a screen or something. So yeah, yeah. I'm used to say that your car is your business card in some way. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So in 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 a way, uh, the diff the the difficult thing to imagine is if the car will not be necessary physically will not be your own because you'll be shared or will be shared with other people. What, how this function of represent yourself will be replaced. So who is going to represent yourself? Your clothes? Well, it was for a while, it's not enough. Your house? Well, maybe, but I don't know what's going to happen with the cars because the cars is, this, is something in between. It's something you, you stay inside and it's something that you wear. So it's uh, we 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 should redesign and rethink what is going to represent ourselves as individuals. So again, we don't know in sixty years, but definitely I know that humans have the necessity to represent themselves in a in a, in, a, in a social environment. So uh, you know, I for example, I read a book about ancient Greeks, and uh, there were a, a defined a detailed definition of their characters, their behaviors. And I was shocked by recognizing in these people exactly the same behaviors that we people have today. We're talking about 3,000 years ago. So probably yeah, but indeed, I, I'm not sure that uh, 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 that men uh, will be in the need to have, uh, uh, to use uh, still uh, a car for this purpose. Uh, fact, simply because uh, uh, 200 years ago there wasn't. Uh, instead, the, you spoke about uh, uh, the dresses or uh, uh, the uh, home, and uh, this is something that is uh, much more radicated in people because uh, from the ancient time uh, in the cave uh, there was anyway some dress and uh, a, a sort of uh, home uh, also if it was simply an hole in a in in a mountain uh, yeah. instead uh, cars has been a great tools first of all for uh, uh, an individual freedom that uh, gave us because uh, mobility was uh, already in some way available also two or three hundred years ago but was uh, was uh, uh, the, the individual mobility was only walking by yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, there was uh, uh, coaches, uh, there were re more recently trains, but uh, uh, were in some way collective uh, uh, movement, not individual movement. Uh, so uh, the great importance of cars for sure has been also to have uh, a freedom in individual mobility, individual or familiar, but uh, it was a, a way for families to, to move uh, without any special constraint. Uh, as you said before, maybe in the future that will be not more necessary or we will have different way because also, for example, uh, the car sharing is uh, something that is already here and uh, it's a possibility to still have individual mobility, so the freedom of individual mobility, but we will lose the, what you are saying currently about the car as an image of myself, uh, because uh, of course uh, I will pick up the first car that I find, not I decided to buy that car because I like that car and not another one. So this this choosing your car, choosing your color, choosing your details is finished. There's no more. This is, is, is definitely finished because it's finished today. So imagine six years from now. But what I think uh, is that what I wanted to say is that that need of representing yourself that the car was 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 having in society today we need to replace it with something else because there will be a need of humans to represent themselves. So I don't know if there will be a new product, something else, I don't know, but that need will be necessary somehow. Uh, well, 
I, I have a couple other little considerations is that not being a mass transportation, the individual vehicle, uh, probably there will be no need for big roads. Uh, roads will be transformed into parks or will be transformed into other uh, facilities for society. But probably we will be flying cars. So the, 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 the drones will be much more common because we, don't, we will not need to go in a mass from one place to another. There will be only few people that will need to move quickly from one place to another. So probably we will have flying vehicles. This is I, what I imagine, especially because... It is something even, have... uh, even worse from a noising point of view, in my opinion. <laughs> Because I, I, I don't know if you were uh, in a situation of being, uh, for example, hiking in the mountain with uh, a drone over your head because there were someone that was liking taking pictures from the top of the mountain. Uh, that's, so I, I don't want to imagine if there are hundreds <laughs> of drones flying uh, around. Like insects. <laughs> No, in any way, uh, uh, so I, I just I wanted to communicate that anything that we have designed is really far away from what is going to happen in, in 60 years from now. And I believe, and this is I would like to talk as a designer point of view, not from mobility, but from a point of view of design uh, in a more extensive uh, uh, consideration that design intended as design thinking. So design being a mental process that gives solution to a problem. So uh, in that wider uh, meaning, I would like to say that uh, this period, which is coming ahead of us, it will be really, really exciting for design because society now is to the edge of collapse. This is what everybody is saying economic collapse, uh, industrial collapse, uh, you know, any, anything is going to change. But uh, to me, which I'm a designer, I believe this is the very good thing because we, we, we can throw away all the garbage and redesign things with the power of mind, with the power of intelligence and the power of design. So I believe that we're entering a great time for, for design because design will not only be a stylist for the fender of the car, but we will be someone which will decide what kind of relationship I have with uh, an institution or what kind of relationship I have in a family or in a community or whatever. So I find very exciting this timing uh, because design can uh, actually become the first interdisciplinary way of approaching problems which up to uh, now has been always... Say, yes. uh, just with a, a, a sentence, uh, but uh, it's something that uh, I like a lot because it's in some ways a provocation, but uh, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, because uh, we cannot... Uh, the, the future is something that we cannot predict, but we can design it participate into the design <laughs> of course <laughs> uh, let me say as uh, designers uh, that i'm not speaking about a single uh, but uh, about the community of uh, designers uh, the future is something that you cannot predict because also looking back at all uh, the also the uh, the writers that tried to figure out the future, of course, there are something, for example, nobody in the past was able to predict uh, the, the smartphones and uh, how many things you could do with a smartphone. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, we can uh, design every day the future that is the next step of our life, of our uh, society, and so on. Yes, since I cannot design the future, as we said by myself, uh, I think that we should work on the definition of new parameters for development, uh, because development has to be considered in a different way. 
uh, it's wrong to look at the PIL, as we say in Italy, uh, as, a, as a positive index. Actually, that is an index of consumption, which means it's like I'm, I'm running very fast. Well, maybe it's not the most desirable thing. And, and I am expecting new values to be, to be uh, put in place after the, the old values have completely been destroyed. Presently, values, ethics, moral, uh, are not so popular, really. Uh, so I'm actually uh, looking forward to see how society will develop in order to work with it, because it's not me to define the values for people. But whenever people, when, when new values will arise, uh, I will be very pleased to participate in those values to make them real, to, to, to become real in society. So create every possible, we say artificial, uh, I don't know the English word for it, uh, artifact, yeah, any possible, uh, let's say product or, uh, or in, in a wider sense, product in a wider sense that can make society improve and make a better life for everybody. This, we always talk about this thing, but then we, we, we kill our neighbors and then we, we, we scratch uh, <laughs> the fenders of the others. You know, people talk about good things, but they don't do them. So my wishful thinking is, I hope that people wakes up and realize that we are all contributing to the real new world together. Any one of us, with our contribution can make a little step, a little brick on the wall to create the new world. This is my optimistic view, <laughs> hoping that the evil side, which I mentioned before, will not take over, will not come and lock us in the houses and do other nasty things. But uh, I'm very positive. And I think that this experiment we did uh, with the Guggenheim Museum, with the Norman Foster Foundation, was a very good opportunity for us to rethink about the whole development of society and everything. Where are we now? Where are we now compared to what is happening and what has happened in the past? So it was, to me, it was very important to understand uh, what is really happening and what is expected from us in the in the next years to come. So this is, is my conclusion. I think you, you want to add something more on this. Probably. No, no, but uh, uh, I, I uh, agree with you about uh, the, the big amount of possibilities that uh, we are facing up uh, because uh, a big change probably uh, will happen and, uh, and that uh, as every trouble situation and change situation means uh, that we will be in the need to destroy something and to create something different. And uh, for sure, from uh, the design point of view, is a, a, a great opportunity. Uh, but uh, it's a great opportunity, uh, generally speaking, for, uh, for human life uh, uh, to, uh, to, change, uh, uh, to change a lot. Uh, at the same time, Usually, this big change is something that uh, uh, you don't realize while they happen. It's something that you realize looking back after sometimes. Uh, it's the same that happens every day in our private life, if you want, uh, in which uh, uh, every day you you decide something about your life and after some years maybe you realize that ah but my life changed when i took that decision that at the moment seems to be something small not so important and and so i feel that when you said before that looking back 60 years uh, ago uh, we can realize that a lot of changes happened and one of the most important things is uh, the speed of change that is increasing uh, uh, in the years. Uh, at the same time, is something that we didn't realize while they were happening. So if you look back at, uh, let me say, mid of 60 or mid of 70, uh, we didn't realize to be 
in, in, a, in a transition phase in which a lot of things will happen and will change. Now, looking back at the, the 70s, uh, we, we look back and we think that, ah, look how old was that situation or how past uh, was that and uh, uh, okay it's happened 50 years ago uh, well i'm i don't know if is a, a big amount of time or a small amount of time because if you look at, at that time uh, from an historical point of view is just peanuts uh, it's uh, uh, it's a couple of seconds in front of uh, the the life of the world uh, for the private life of every every man is uh, is a lot uh, maybe is even all the life uh, and so uh, it's interesting and uh, incredible also the different uh, uh, perception that you have. Uh, because uh, also, if you look back at uh, the end of the uh, the Roman Empire, uh, now we think that uh, happened uh, suddenly. Uh, instead, uh, it took centuries before uh, dying completely. And I don't know how much the people living at that time were able to understand what was happening, really. So that that's is another interesting part that uh, I'm really interested in uh, understanding and uh, in uh, in looking uh, how you, my dream is uh, to have the opportunity to be back uh, in a couple of yeah, centuries this... far and looking what will happen because uh, this this shows how how faster and faster goes progress into into the future so you more you go back and more the time looks slow more you go ahead and more the time goes fast so imagining 60 years from now or it's it's with the the speed of technology that we have today is really impressive uh you know what is the point of designing a car or a, a vehicle in 2000 for 2086 if in 2085 the 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 human race will be extinct <laughs> so you see so i mean it's it's a matter of thinking you know just uh, uh, understanding what we where we are and where we have to work seriously to create a better future yeah and and of course uh, 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 that's for sure that any uh, idea any proposal that we can do today about 2086 will be for sure just uh, an hypothesis uh, that, that's uh, that's obvious and uh, probably nothing uh, of uh, what we are thinking uh, today will happen uh, or it will happen different uh, in some different way uh, and this is the main reason why i would like to see <laughs> and uh, the, <laughs> unfortunately it will not happen but <laughs> i would like to say that because of the success of this experience, it would be nice to repeat it every couple of years so to uh, yeah. understand what's happening. <laughs> Maybe we should establish some kind of appointment every two years to look forward. You know, next time we'll go to 2096. Maybe. Okay. So uh, I think that uh, uh, it was a, a very interesting talk uh, and uh, uh, let me say thank you uh, to Nicola Crea and uh, thank you to everybody that uh, will uh, um, spend their time uh, looking at and listening to uh, this talk and uh, have fun and see you in the future. <laughs>